In less than three months, I doubled my company's profitability using one simple Google Sheet, which I'm gonna share with you in this video. Before I share it with you, just give me 45 seconds so I can explain why I was forced to create this Google Sheet in the first place and why you have to track your finances as you scale. Then for the rest of the video, I'll screen share and show you what the Google Sheet is and how to use it. As usual, if you want free access to this Google Sheet and the instructions that come with it, please click the link in the description down below. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ravi Abuvala. I'm the guy who builds marketing and sales systems for some of the largest names in our industry. Over the past four years, we've worked with almost 2,000 clients and generated over $25 million in sales for our company. But the thing that allowed us to really scale was when I mastered our finances. Truthfully, I used to not pay any attention to them. I would spend more when we were doing well and less when cash was tight. It was purely based on emotions. When someone wanted a raise, it was based on my feelings. When the team wanted to hire someone knew it was based on how much cash we collected in the last few days when my media buyers asked me for a monthly budget i randomly threw out a number however as i scaled i couldn't afford to be so lazy about it the little things matter when you start paying multiple six figures a month in payroll and ad spends but i couldn't find anything online or on youtube that showed precisely how to track my finances what profit margin i should have how much i should spend in each department what my marketing budget should be etc 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 Etc. So I decided to create that system for myself and share it with our high ticket clients and the members of our membership site, Scaling School. Today, I'm going to share with you one piece of that system, the financial tracker. Let's get started. Okay, so we know how important it is to track our numbers. We know about checking our numbers every single day. We know how to, uh, when we're checking our numbers, look at our expense reports and see if there's anything that here that we don't know about. Make sure our team members are submitting those in. We know how to run payroll now. We know how to process payroll. We know how to look at the numbers inside payroll. We know how to filter the payroll, et cetera, et cetera. So the final thing I wanna show you is the finance tracker. And this one, it, in its simplicity, is where it's really incredibly powerful. Now, I said this in the first video, but I'm just gonna reiterate it here in the sense that we're not using this for your bookkeeping. We're not using this for uh, taxes, end of year. You're not sending this into the government. So some of you may even be financial professionals and you're looking at this and you're going, Ravi, you're doing this all wrong, blah, blah, blah. This is just something that you as a CEO can look at inside your company and know exactly what needs to change. It's the same thing as looking at ads. It's the same thing as looking at uh, cost per click, cost per book call, cost per acquisition, your open rates and your emails. This is the exact same thing, but this is for the most important part of your business, which is the finances. Okay. So uh, I'm going to walk you through some things I do include and I don't include inside of here. Um, but it's very important that you understand that this is not going to be for taxes. This is so that you can understand essentially what your business is running at. If you had to get rid of everything, if you didn't have all the fancy dinners and you weren't flying first class and putting on your business card for business expenses, all that stuff, if it was just like, what is the business yielding us in cash? This will actually let you know the numbers here. So um, as usual, this will be linked down below so you can check this out. Let me walk you through what the finance tracker looks like here. So very similar to the uh, to the payroll tracker, you can have months here. This is, says March 2024. Um, and then uh, I'm going to break down each of these. So the category is essentially what we're going to be looking at inside each cell here. So cash, payroll, marketing, overhead. Uh, operating expenses, net operating income, taxes, net income. I'm gonna walk through each of those in a second. The amounts uh, that month, the percent of total cash. So it's exactly the same inside the payroll tracker here where it shows that the percent of uh, total cash for each payroll, each person, you're gonna do the percent of total cash for each, um, uh, each amount. So, and I'm gonna walk you through uh, what each of these percentages should be inside of here. Then we have the, the dollar change month over month. So how much more or less uh, this month do we have in absolute dollars in this number here? Uh, what's the percentage change? So, uh, you know, let's say for example, total cash, you made $100,000 this month. Let's say that it was $100,000 more than last month, then this would have $100,000 positive here, and then it would be a 100% increase uh, than what you did last month. And then any notes that you have inside of here that you're noticing that you want to be able to look at on a month to month basis. Okay, very simple how this is broken down. Now, let me walk you through each category. Um, and then I'm going to walk you through what we're looking at for numbers here. And then I'm going to break it down finally by actually running through how I do this using our um, using our PL uh, uh, SOP here. So 
Total cash is pretty obvious. This is going to be the number pulled directly from Chase and it is all the deposits that are related to that month to the business. So I literally just, I'm gonna show you in a second here, I look at all of the deposits inside of our business banking account and anything that's a plus, I don't care if it's a referral, it's an affiliate, uh, it's a, a high ticket sale, it's a low ticket sale, all of that comes inside of here for the total of mash, uh, total cash and I put that number in there. Payroll is going to be uh, pulled directly from Chase and this is uh, everything that has to do with our payroll and it should match one-to-one -one on our payroll tracker here. So you wanna make sure that this total net pay, uh, this 24,450 matches exactly what this payroll is right here, but I'm not pulling it from, um, uh, I'm not pulling it from the, from that payroll tracker yet. I'm pulling it from the bank account. Cause remember the, where you can kind of get in trouble and get messed up is when you're using all these sheets all the time and you're not actually looking at the thing that matters the most, which is the money coming in and out of your bank account. There's no, you can play with the sheets and make the numbers look nice. There's no way to change what's coming in and out of your bank account. Okay. So for that reason there, you want to make sure you're looking at that. And then the number should be almost exactly on payroll, uh, one to one, what you see on the payroll tracker. I'm usually off by like fifty dollars, right? So that's give or take fifty dollars. Which you know, when you're processing hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, fifty dollars isn't even worth looking at uh, to try to find the solution, the reason for it. But you get the idea behind it. Uh, marketing is going to be advertising spend plus referral fees. This is not, you know, you working with scaling with systems. This is not your agency cost. This is not um, uh, a software. This is literally just advertising spend and referral fees. You, if you were doing um, even cold emailing, I probably wouldn't even include the cost for cold emailing inside of here, right? Uh, this should just be uh, at scale. You're going to be pretty much spending advertising spend and referral fees. What is your cost to acquire a customer essentially, right? So for that, uh, us, that's just those two main things that we're looking at inside of here. I'll put that number inside of there. And that's pulled directly from the Facebook ad account and the Google ad account. So I don't pull it from the bank accounts because, you know, if you're spending three, four, five thousand dollars a day, then you might not get billed for that until the, ne the beginning of the next month, even though you spent that in the last month. So what we like to do is literally look directly inside the ad account and I'll just take that number and I'll copy it inside of here and I'll add them together. Overhead, uh, this is uh, just to let you know what overhead is. Overhead is pretty much everything that is required to run the business that doesn't fall into payroll or marketing. So I'm gonna give you examples here in a moment, but this is just so you understand the definition of overhead. So overhead is like, this is required to keep the company up and running and making money, okay? So overhead includes uh, merchant processing fees, software costs, bank fees, required travel, like if we are flying team members out for company retreats or for masterminds, legal fees, bookkeeper fees, family office fees, interest on loans you have, short form agencies, agency fees. What is not included is like gifts because uh, it's, it's not required for us to give our clients gifts. We just like to do it. Non-required travel, like if you go uh, do something like a mastermind or something like that, I wouldn't personally put that inside of here because I don't have to go to the mastermind to run my business. That's just bonus. Uh, my iPhone, insurance, car payments, Wi-Fi rent, all those things are not included because you know I'd likely be doing those things if, it, if I had a business or didn't have a business. So I'm not trying to put that inside of here as um, as an expense because that could really skew your numbers. For example, I just came back from China and it was like a mastermind and I also had my birthday there and I spent about $28,000 on that trip. So, you know, if I had put that inside of here as an overhead, that would have really skewed our overhead numbers there because we usually don't have a $28,000 line item on that, um, right? So that's why I don't include that inside of there because quite frankly, if I didn't have a business, I would still do it, but I wouldn't, it wouldn't be under my business expense, okay? Um, and then total operating expenses is just the accumulation of all of these numbers here. So how much does it cost you to run your business? Net operating income is what you netted that month in, in total profit. It's called EBITDA because it's before taxes, earning before interest, uh, depreciation, uh, something in taxes. Uh, and then you have taxes. Uh, and so taxes is, yeah, that's that ugly thing that you got to pay unless you're in a country that you don't have to pay any taxes in. Congratulations for you. And so what I like to do, because I know a lot of people that get in trouble with taxes, is I like to calculate my taxes at the beginning of the month. And then I pull that money aside and I put it in a separate account called Wealthfront that I'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, and when I do that, I'm able to not ever look at that money. It's earning me interest. So it's like, it's, it's, it's kind of making me a lot of money. It's making me a few percentage points every single month, I think 5%, um, which is great. Uh, but I never look at it and never touch it because what I don't want to do is you don't want to get in trouble with the tax man. Okay. So I think a lot of people, what they, they do is they run their numbers every single month. 
They're like, great, this number right here, let's say I made $50,000 in net operating income. Great, everything's going great. I should spend 50 grand. Let me invest it. Let me go on a trip and vacation. They end up spending $50,000, except for they didn't calculate their taxes. And so at the end of the year, they have to pay the, the 25, 35, 40% on the, that 50 grand. And now you're trying to find that money and scramble at the end of the year. So instead, I just take it out of the, even though it hurts my, my little heart, I take it out every single month. At the beginning of the month, I put it in a separate account. So I'm never in trouble with taxes. This, this is as much of a total a cost of running a business as your overhead is, as your marketing is, as your payroll is. It's just in a different section. But don't think that it's an optional thing. Okay. And then net income. And this is what I am taking home. This is, I can spend this, I can blow this. This, whatever I wanted to do, this is what I'm taking every single month. So a lot of people, they think that they're making, I don't know, let's just use a number here and say $100,000. Like, oh, I'm making 100 grand, I'm making 100 grand. So they spend 100 grand every month. Or they're like, oh, I have some costs. And so they spend 80 grand a month. But then I'm going to show you how quickly this number can be a lot lower here in a moment. Okay. Um, and so uh, the tax number here, I just assume a 25% uh, tax rate on the net operating income. Now, why do I do 25%? You know, I'm at the highest tax bracket in the United States. So that's 39%. But um, it's, it, you know, it doesn't, it's not like all that money gets charged at 39%. It's, I think it's called progressive realization, but it's like anything over this amount is 39%. Anything over this amount is, is this percent, blah, blah, blah. And you have to remember, I'm not including all of my expenses. So uh, when it actually comes to pay taxes, I would have included that trip to China, which is twenty seven, twenty eight thousand dollars, and so I would have deducted that off of this before, uh, and so I would have to pay less money. So for me, I found that twenty five percent tax rate. Last year, I was almost right on the money for how much I would owe in taxes. Okay, uh, and also if you're working with a good like financial advisor, family office, they may be able to lower your tax rate down even more. So, you know, I'm not. Uh, luckily for most of you watching this, we're in a kind of business where if you did need to scramble to get some money for, for taxes, like let's say you undershot, then you could typically do it, right? Because we're in such a cash heavy business. Um, but uh, most of the time you won't have to if you do this correctly. Okay, so I assume a 25% um, tax rate. If you wanted to, you could change this to 30% or 10% or 1%, whatever else you wanted to do inside of here, okay? Uh, so that's that's each of the categories inside of here. That's how that works. Now, let me just walk through some of the interesting numbers uh, in this. Okay, so uh, the first is going to be the uh, the numbers of what we're looking at for. Oh, actually, one second. Okay, so uh, total cash, uh, the percent of total cash is going to be 100%. So this is if that's pretty obvious, but uh, the percent of the total cash of the total cash is 100%. Anything divided by one by one is, uh, is one. The payroll. So this is uh, now let's, we're going to get into like how much these numbers should be, and this is going to vary greatly based on what kind of business you have. Is it courses? Is it done for you? Are you in scale mode? Are you in in in, uh, in conservative mode? Are you in life saving mode? So just understand that this is going to vary greatly. If you're working with us inside Scaling with Systems Scaling Initiative, we're going to be able to tell you based on your business what we think or what we've seen before. Uh, if you're not in Scaling with Systems Scaling Initiative, then you're going to going to have to uh, wing it or guess it, but uh, this is the rough numbers that I've seen. So um, for me, just to kind of give you a number here, I'm going to start at the very bottom, which is net operating income. I'm essentially, I don't want to run a business for less than 50% profit margin. I just, it's just not worth it for me, to be honest with you. Um, and so I want a 50% profit margin as my bare minimum. I put 48% because um, we're kind of in a scale mode right now. So some of our expenses are a little bit higher, but roughly 50% in profit margin, anything below that. And I better be doing something insane, like investing in some kind of complex or something like that. But it's just not worth it for me for less than 48%. Right now, one one month could be okay for being underneath 48%. I've definitely had that, but overall, I'm shooting for 48%. So now that you know that of 100%, you have let's just uh, say the 48%, you have 52% to spend. Right, that's how much you have to be able to run and scale your business. 58%. Now let's break down what those numbers actually are. Now for payroll. We're looking for roughly 27%. So client success should be 10%. Uh, sales should be 12%. Marketing and media should be 2%. Uh, and operations and billing should be 3%. Okay, so that's the rough numbers that we found that works out well. Why do these numbers uh, work this way? Client success for us, we're like a consulting offer. We help people scale their businesses. And so I spend a lot of money every single month on super talented client success managers. And so I have to be willing to pay 10% in order to see uh, to make sure our clients see results there. If you are hiring people in the VAs overseas, maybe you don't even have a client test manager, maybe you're an agency, they're an account manager, you could probably get away with 5% on that. But for me, it's it's 10%. Uh, sales should be 12%. So typically you're gonna have some kind of breakdown here where 
uh, your salespeople are getting 10% or 9%, uh, then your setter is getting 3%, uh, and then your uh, maybe your sales team leader is getting 1%, 2%, 3%, something like that. So that's going to roughly enter 12%. I've had this as high as 18 to 20%. Bringing it down was one of the best things I ever did for the company. Okay, so definitely, definitely lower this because remember, if you're running at a 50% margin, every percentage point in, uh, in revenue is two percentage points. It's double in profit. So if you're spending... Uh, 20 grand a month in payroll to somebody, you're really spending 40 grand of your profit that that's eating out. So it's important that you know these numbers. Marketing and media. So this is going to be your creative director, your video editors, your media buyers, your marketing director, all of that stuff should be 2%. Uh, and then operations and billing should be 3%. So this is going to be uh, your director of operations, your COO, your uh, executive assistant, your HR manager, all of that stuff, uh, your billing people, your controller should be 3% of total cash. So that gives us about 27%. I wanted to have it at 25%. That's really what our, our dream goal is, but it is difficult at scale to get 25%. I'm just gonna let you know right now, at least for us. Okay. Marketing is 20%. So this is, we want to make sure that of the money we're making every single month, we are spending 20% of it in marketing, specifically ads and referrals. So, you know, if I'm saying that we're, a lot of people know this, a lot of people are afraid to spend money on ads. Uh, and they're like, oh, I can't spend more than this amount of money. For us, I give our media buyers a minimum amount of money they have to spend every single day. So they have to spend this money. I'm like, go take it, spend it somewhere. Because at least for us, every time we spend money, we make more money. It's just, it's, it's a rule, absolute rule. And when I look at the P&Ls for the past few years, the, the years that I spent more money on ads and marketing, we made more. The years that I spent less, we made less. It's, it's as literally as simple as that. Uh, so even if it's not a one-to-one -one thing, even if it's not like, oh, this Hyros link here goes, to the blah, blah, I just know spend more money on ads. It, it, it almost never is anything ever bad, which always is. A, that's a separate conversation when people are like, oh, I haven't seen a ROI. I spent $100. It's like, no, no, no. That's because you're so emotional and you're like, oh, I have to get an ROI immediately. Instead of looking at this and saying, you know what? I'm willing to allocate 20% every single month. Just take it. That's the cost of doing business and scaling. Take it. This is yours. 20%. This is all yours. And then you, now you know you have to spend this money and you can get way more aggressive and way more comfortable with the numbers that you're running instead of being so emotional with the numbers that you have. Uh, overhead, we're looking for 5%. So this is gonna be all of that stuff that we talked about earlier. So this is gonna be merchant processing, software, bank, required travel, legal fees, bookkeepers, all of that stuff should be 5%. If I'm being honest with you right now, we're closer to seven to 8% for that, which is a little bit frustrating on my end, but it's because we just migrated uh, CRMs. I was paying for both CRMs at the same time. There's a lot of things going on that makes me a little bit upset that it's, it's a little bit higher, um, but, that being said, it is what it is, okay? Uh, total operating expenses here is gonna be the total of all these numbers, and then net operating income, like I said, is 48%, okay? Uh, so with all that being said, let me just walk through an example of what this looks like, okay? So before I do that, let me show you guys, below this video is gonna be this uh, this little, sh this document, which is essentially how to do this step-by-step. So this is exactly how I do every single thing for our business, okay? So at the on the sixth of every single month, I look at this thing and I just go through it one by one. When I hire a controller, they're gonna do this for me. So first thing I do is I move all the funds from my Venmo to my personal checking account. Venmo for me is all my personal stuff. PayPal is all my business stuff. So I transfer everything from Venmo to my personal checking account. I then I transfer everything from PayPal to the business checking account. So any money that we made from PayPal. Uh, any cash that exceeds your, your uh, essentially your three to six months emergency savings uh, from the business to the personal. So uh, it, let's say your three months is $100,000 here. Then you're gonna move everything above $300,000 from the business to the personal. Now, this is for multiple different reasons. Uh, I'm not gonna say that I'm a lawyer or financial advisor. You should look at it. But mainly, first of all, it protects you. So you have a separation in case you ever got sued. Uh, then the money's not sitting in your bank, your business checking account, which they could go after. It's in your personal. And now it makes it a little bit more difficult for them to go after. Uh, number two, you can... Uh, allocate that money accordingly. So um, you know that, uh, that you know, you want to be able to invest in real estate and stocks and crypto and, and yourself and your family and whatever else it is. And so you want to just never touch the money that's in the business checking account. And you want that number to restart at uh, to the baseline every single month. Uh, and then also your taxes, right? So you, you technically, a lot of people know this, but your business doesn't pay taxes unless you're a C corporation. Most of you are going to be LLCs, S corps or sole props. You, you pay taxes, you as a person pays taxes. So no matter what to pay taxes, it needs to go from business to personal and then from personal over to pay the tax man, okay? So I move anything above your emergency savings amount uh, from business to the personal. Then 
I go through and I record all the deposits in my bank accounts under total cash and deduct any withdrawals uh, for refunds or chargebacks, okay? And I make sure that uh, I sometimes will see withdrawals uh, and it'll, it'll be a huge amount, but it's actually the fees, the monthly fees from the, the, uh, the using the merchant processors, okay? So let me go to the finance tracker. Let's say that I'm, I'm doing all the math, I add everything up inside of here, and let's just say that I have $100,000 in cash, right? So I'm literally just line iteming inside my Chase account. Boom, 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 plus, 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 plus. But uh, I also, uh, we had a $10,000 refund uh, inside of there. So I'll say equals the sum of these two numbers. So my total cash is $90,000 this month, right? That's how much money the company made, top line total cash that came in. Sorry about that. I added a little formula right before we started this so that it didn't uh, show an error and I messed up the numbers there. So, uh, so ninety thousand dollars is the total amount here. Hundred thousand dollars minus ten thousand dollars, ninety thousand dollars. So that's a hundred percent of the total cash. Then I do the payroll. So I look inside my uh, my checking account and I look at all the numbers that um, that we paid out to Gusto. Uh, and I'm looking. Okay, cool. This 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 is added all up together. And then I enter that number in here. Let's just say for easy numbers, it is. Um, $20,000, right? So I'll put that right here. Uh, and we want this number to be, we want this number to be uh, 27%. So it's 22%, which is great. Um, and then we're gonna come down to marketing and we pull it directly from our ads. Let's say that we spend $15,000 in ads and referrals. Uh, then that's gonna be 16.67%. So that's, we're looking for 20%. So that's awesome. And then for our overhead here, let's say that uh, when we add up all the software, everything we have like that, let's say we have eight thousand dollars in overhead merchant processing fees etc cetera, etc cetera. so then that puts us um and i'm sorry that this numbers are a little bit off guys i, I changed one form and it messed everything up but this, this should be good um and when you copy it it'll be totally fine so this number right here is eight percent and we're looking at five percent for the overhead right so that's why this box is red i created some conditional formatting here if you right click here you can see view more sales options conditional formatting and so I said, if the number is greater than 5%, then make it red. So because $8,000 is greater than 5%, now I know I can hone in and look at this number right here and I know exactly where we need to be paying attention to inside the company. It doesn't mean that we need to cut all of our software and everything immediately. It just means that this is an area you need to pay attention to, right? If this was instead $4,000, then it would be a 4% and we'd be totally fine. But let's go back here and say $8,000. So it's 8.89% of our total cash uh, and that's a concern because our overhead should be essentially 5%, okay? So total operating expenses to run the business A to Z is $43,000, which is 47% of our uh, percentage cash, and which means that we're taking home $47,000 earning before interest uh, tax depreciation EBITDA. And so that's, we want 48% uh, and we're at 52. So you're running at 52% profit margins, which is a really great, healthy business. Then we, don't forget, you gotta pay Uncle, Uncle Sam. So then we look at the taxes here. So we have to assume a 25% tax rate. So 25% of the uh, net operating income is, um, is 11,750, so 25% of this number. So uh, that's gonna be 13% of your total cash, which means that when all is said and done, after taxes, the number that I have to, uh, not even to reinvest in the growth of the business, because remember, this is, marketing's included inside of here. So the amount of money I have to take home, to spend on investments, to take personally, what I should be essentially seeing inside my, uh, keeping inside my personal checking account is gonna be 35,250, right? And so this is what the finance tracker is. This is what makes your business so much easier. And really, it kind of gamifies it, it makes it fun. You can figure out where things are wrong. Let's say, for example, I was running payroll, and let's say that this payroll here, fifty thousand dollars, is actually fifty thousand dollars. Well, now we're at uh, all these numbers become uh, red immediately. So because now we're at fifty five percent of payroll uh, of total cash is going to payroll, and I should be at twenty seven percent. And we're running at a, a eighteen point eight nine, so a nineteen percent profit margin, um, and we're taking home fourteen percent when all is said and done. So this is where the magic happens. This is what makes it so much easier to run a business. It's no longer a guessing game. It's no longer how you feel. You're not giving out raises based on what looks good, what feels good. You know exactly how much money that you have to spend. Let's say instead we saw that we're at $10,000. Uh, in payroll. Now we're at 11%, which means that we can go up um, quite a bit. So in order to get to 27% uh, of $90,000, 90, 123 times 0.27, that's 24,300 that we have to spend. So if we've only spent $10,000, that means we have 14,300 that then we can go out and make hires for. And that's exactly what I would do. I don't, I don't want to keep 
the 27% for myself because I don't want to work. I want to hire team members to work for me. And so by doing that number, we know, wow, we have this much more money we can go out and spend. Let's see what we can, let's buy back some of our time. Okay. Uh, same thing for marketing. If I, if I know I should be spending 20%, I'd be upset if I'm spending 16% because I know that I should be spending 90, one, two, three times 0.2 is $18,000. So if we're spending 15, I need $3,000 more that's going into marketing, right? And then overhead, I need to be looking at this. Why is overhead so high? So for example, you might say, I just did this uh, for January, back in January. But for example, we had our scaling initiative events, um, which costs us, I think it was like $14,000 with the office space, the, the yacht that we did, the flying the team members down, et cetera, et cetera. So that would be the reason why, uh, when I looked at our numbers, our overhead was higher that month because we had that inside of there. Now, if I extrapolated that over six months and what our scaling initiative clients pay us, we'd be totally green, but this is the reasoning behind it here, okay? Um, the final thing I wanted to talk about here was the actual payroll. So uh, what, if, I was ca- if I was doing this correctly, I would be pulling the numbers directly from Chase, but then I would always go back inside of the uh, the payroll tracker, and I would make sure that this net pay number matches this number here for the payroll, or it's at least within $100 of it, uh, and that lets me know that, yes, this system is working correctly. If this was exactly what we did right here, $24,000 and this says uh, $10,000, then I would just, I would say, oh, something's wrong, and I need to go back and reconcile why that's the case. Um, in my experience, it's typically the chase is always going to be the most accurate. And I always uh, use the number that's from chase because that's the money that's actually leaving my account. And then I'll just try to figure out and I'll reconcile. Why is this number so weird inside of here? Okay. So um, I put the total cash inside of here. I put the payroll inside of here as well. So you can see this, um, uh, the marketing expenses, the overhead costs inside of there. Uh, the tax management for taxes, I move the thing from taxes down to Wealthfront. So that's a, a platform that we use because I think it gets 5% plus it's FDIC insured up to $3 million. So if something were to happen, you're insured by the government up to $3 million in it. So I think it's a great place to put your money. I'm not endorsing it. If you do your research beforehand, I'm not saying you should do it. I just use it personally. I've used it for over a year now. And if you use this link, we both get, I think like 0.055% more APY. So um, feel free to use that. And then once I'm done with everything, once I have inputted all the numbers here, I've identified what's right, what's wrong, how much more do we need spending money on? What's our, what's our marketing for for next month? What, you know, uh, are we spending too much on payroll? All that stuff. Then I'll finally do the transaction review. So now I actually go back one more time through every single payment and debit that we have coming in and out of our uh, our bank accounts and I do a final review. I look at every single three thing A to Z and I just make sure, should we be spending money on this? Why are we spending money on this? Is this good, bad, blah, blah, blah. And uh, and now I have the whole t- kind of total picture of things so I can say, okay, let me look at it knowing that my I need to actually be closer to, what's 5% of 90,000? 90 times 0.05. I need to be closer to $4,500. So if I'm at eight, I need to minus 4.5. I need to get rid of $3,500 this coming up month, or I need to make more money up here. Um, so I need to go see, is there anything here that I can remove in order to make that, uh, to fix that $3,500 deficit? Uh, everyone says it's always easier to make more money than to cut stuff. I agree. You should definitely be looking to make more money, but, but this, you can't, if this number is always increasing and then these numbers are always increasing, then you'll just be on a, on a, um, you'll just be on a treadmill for the rest of your life. So it is helpful to kind of go through line item and check everything one by one. Uh, And then I'll ask key stakeholders like team members, hey, do we still need this? Um, Can we change these things? And then the final thing I'll do is I'll actually look at the payroll. So I look at, uh, I assess all the team members in there. Would I rehire this person? That is a great question to ask yourself for a team member. If, if this person left today and you had a chance to rehire them, would you? If the answer is no, then you let them go, okay? The great, my favorite question when it comes to hiring team members. Uh, how would they react if I gave notice? So it, would they be, so, I've had two people in the past six months when I let them go, they're like, yeah, I knew this was coming. I'm like, if you knew this was coming, that means that the past three, six, seven months, you've just been milking the payroll here. Who who does that, right? That's a terrible thing to do. So if they were like totally shocked and blindsided, then that, you know, I know that sounds bad, but at least it lets me know that they felt like they were giving it their all. If they had already said, oh yeah, I knew it was coming. It just lets me know that I should have fired this person way long ago. What if the company size doubled, right? If we were scaling, which we want to do, would this person still fit inside of here? Uh, And then I would provide immediate feedback. And if I needed a performance improvement plan, then I would create one of those and say, hey, you know, 
I'm right now, let's go back to the payroll tracker. Right now, you're costing me um, 5% of our total cash every single month. Uh, for a, uh, a tech lead, I think that's way too much. So um, you either need to take on these responsibilities, I need to cut this back, you need to change these things, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, ensure each team member re- re- uh, generates a 10x return on investment. If I'm being honest, this is a little bit um, lofty, a 10x return. But I did read this from uh, somebody I admire. And they said that, yeah, each of your team members should generate you at least a 10x return. And I think it's a great number to look at. So if you're hiring somebody and they're giving you, you're spending uh, $5,000 a month on them and they're making you $5,500, it's just, that's an opportunity cost. You can put that money into ads or something else, Okay. Um, and then you consider the necessity of each position and if, if adequate leverage is applied. So, okay, this person is costing me this money. Is there any way that I can have them work less hours? Is there any way I can have them make me more money? How can I apply leverage to that position to get more out of that work? Uh, and then you document any concerns or insights. And then below that's going to be the actual two links that you have. So you can create your own version of these two things here. So uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it just, I guess the final thing is what if you to duplicate this, you would just click duplicate here. And let's say that we're going to do... Um, February, right? So then I would come in here, I would zero out these numbers. The main thing you wanna do is of course, change these numbers here to being the month before. So this would be January and this would be January. Right, and then I would just drag these down. Boom, boom, cool. And then it, it, it would work out well. I would erase all these out, et cetera, et cetera. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the finance tracker. This is something that, man, I wish that I had years ago. I, I seriously wish I had this years ago. Uh, I would set aside some time on Saturday and literally set aside six, eight hours and do this for every month that you can. Uh, go back as far back as you can. Start the most recent months because those are the most relevant and go back as far as possible. When I first created this, I went back eight months because uh, I didn't have it. I had my bookkeeper, I had all that stuff. And then I was looking, I was like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. Oh, I was paying way too much in payroll. It all clicked immediately. So go back there and do it. If you got value out of it, make sure you uh, let us know, uh, let everybody else know so they can come check it out as well. If you like this video, be sure to also watch the next video on how we generate 20 plus sales calls a day using something we call the self-sustaining funnel.